some more tips and tricks for your Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Timestamps will be down in the description, as well as a link to the first tips and tricks video we did for the S24 Ultra. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. For this first tip, let's learn how to use AI to clean up some drawings that we do on our images. First thing to do to try this out is open up your gallery, and you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and open up an image. Once you have your image open, let's go ahead and tap on the pencil icon. This puts us in edit mode. And now down at the bottom, we're gonna have this fourth icon here called decorations. And then what we have here is a bunch of S Pen tips. Let's go ahead and tap on one of these. And you'll notice this fourth pin icon has a star over it. This represents AI. So we're gonna go ahead and select this one and get out of here. So I'm gonna try my best here to draw a shape. I'm gonna to try to draw a sword or something real quick. Let's see how I do. All right, a little point at the end there, like this. A little handle, like this. Now it's gonna give us a bunch of recommendations. And look at this, we can go ahead and pick one of these swords. Boom. And once it places our sword here, we can go ahead and move this around, rotate it, enlarge it, shrink it back down. And you can go ahead and save this off and send it a text message. For this next tip, did you know that your Galaxy S24 Ultra supports Chromecast when using SmartView? This was initially included in the One UI 6.0 beta, and then they removed it when the full release came out, and now it's back with One UI 6.1. So what you wanna do is swipe down twice, and then you're gonna tap on Smart View down at the bottom of your notification panel. Once you have Smart View open, you're gonna have your three dot menu up here in the top right. You wanna go ahead and pick that and go into settings. Now you wanna go into the lab section. And then down here at the bottom, you're gonna have a toggle to add Chromecast support. Go ahead and turn that on. So now you can go ahead and use your S24 Ultra with TVs that are connected up with a Chromecast dongle or if it has Chromecast built in. So that's pretty sweet that we have Chromecast support now baked into SmartView. For this next tip, and I'm pretty sure we covered this in another video, but I wanna make sure it's included in this tips and tricks video as well. Let's learn how to get rid of this silly bar down here on our navigation. And we'll also learn how to go back to the old school three bar navigation if you don't like this new nav setting that we have for One UI 6.1. First thing you need to do is head out to the Samsung Galaxy Store. And once you're here, you wanna search for and install Samsung's Good Lock. This is a free customization app that includes a whole bunch of modules for you to download that will allow you to fine tune and customize your S24 Ultra. If you're searching for Good Lock and you don't see it in the Samsung Galaxy Store, I'll go ahead and link a video down in the description to show you how to get it. It may not be available in your region. Once you have Good Lock up and running, you wanna go ahead and open up Navstar. If you don't have Navstar installed already, it'll prompt you to download it right here. So once it's installed, Go ahead and go in there and turn Navstar on. And then you wanna go here to enable extra gesture settings. Turn this toggle on. And now what we can do is we can minimize that. You can go ahead and close out of good luck actually. We can go down to display in our display settings. We're gonna go down until we get to navigation bar. All right, there it is. So now that we're in navigation bar, we're gonna to go to more options. And this implies that you're using swipe gestures. This hint doesn't apply for those of you that are using buttons. So if you're using swipe gestures, you're gonna go into more options. Once you're in more options, you're gonna have the ability to go back to the old One UI 6.0 gestures, as well as stay with the One UI 6.1 gestures. That's pretty cool if you're not really happy with this new one swipe gesture. But in addition to that, we have the option to turn off the gesture hint. So once we turn this off, you're gonna notice this little bar is now gone from the bottom of your screen. So even though this bar is removed, everything works the same. There's no difference at all. And you can press and hold to start up Google Circle to Search, just like we did right there. So you don't lose any functionality. All it does is clean up your nav bar. With this next tip, doesn't it kind of suck when you're watching a full screen video like this? It doesn't matter if it's on YouTube, Netflix, HBO Max, whatever. And you go back to your home screen to check a notification and stuff. And then your icons are always sideways like this. And you gotta go back in your video. And then we go back to our home screen and you know, everything looks wonky like this. So let's go ahead and make it to where our home screen can work in landscape mode. Let's first go into our settings. And then we're gonna scroll down until we see home screen. Now once we're inside the home screen settings, we're gonna scroll all the way down until we see rotate to landscape mode. So now when we rotate our screen, it's gonna go into landscape like this. And this also works for our app drawer as well. And this is really nice when you're using Smart View. You know, take a look here. Instead of being stuck in portrait mode where you're only getting a little bit on your TV screen, 
For this next tip, let's learn how to make clear calls with our Galaxy S24 Ultra. The first thing you need to do is start up a phone call. Once you have a call going, go ahead and swipe down twice on your notification panel and you're going to have mic mode. Here you have the option to now switch between standard and voice focus. When you switch to voice focus, it's going to block out all the background noise around you and it's going to make it to where the people on the other end of the call are going to be able to hear you a lot clearer. So you definitely want to check out voice focus. For this next tip, let's learn a cool little trick that we can do with our camera app. So once you have a camera application open, let's go ahead and head over to more. Now what we used to have is we used to have an option called director's cut, but now that's been replaced by this option called dual recording. So we're going to go ahead and tap on this. And once we're in here, this is pretty sweet. What this does is it uses your back cameras and allows us to switch between the different lenses here. And it gives you a preview of what that looks like in real time. But in addition to that, it also records your front facing camera, which can be really useful for like content creators, or if you just happen to want to get people in one shot and yourself in another. But a cool little trick here is up here on the top, this third option here, this lets you save both of these recordings into one file, or if you tap on it one time, that's going to separate it out into two separate files. And that becomes super useful if you're into video editing, because now you'll have individual files to work with in post, and that can really speed up and help with the editing process. For this next tip, while we're on the subject of the camera application, let's go into our camera app settings. And what you want to tap on is intelligent optimization. Now we have a bunch of options here and I'm pretty sure the default is maximum. If you don't like the way your images are turning out, if you feel like there's too much sharpness, too much vibrancy and they look kind of fake, turn this down to minimum and this will turn off the scene optimizer. And this is going to help reduce all the AI post-processing, neuro-processing, blah, blah, blah that happens on your photos. It will also help improve the shutter speed a little bit because there's not going to be that lag between the post-processing and the phone being ready for the next shot. All right, for this next tip, sometimes it kind of sucks when you're watching YouTube and you want to go to your home screen and take care of some business and you still have YouTube playing. And then you go ahead and open it back up and it's still going and stuff, but then it's just always there and being pesky. You don't have to have this behavior if you don't like it. What you can do is tap and hold on your YouTube icon, whether it be in your app drawer or somewhere on your uh, home screen, doesn't matter. And then once you have that, you're going to hit this little information icon. And once you're inside here, you're going to scroll down a little bit until you see picture in picture. Go ahead and pick that and we're going to turn this off. All right, now when we go back to YouTube, we go ahead and play our video and we go back to our home screen. YouTube's gone. It's still there in the background. We can get to it if you want to go right back to it. But now it's not cluttering up your home screen every time you want to go back home. So you may or may not find this useful. It just depends if you want that little picture in picture window. For this next tip, I think it's really cool that Google Circle to Search also works on text for translating it and not just objects. So what I mean by that is we can go ahead and enable Circle to Search, press and hold here. And then we can go ahead and press this text icon down here in the bottom right hand corner. And this is going to give us the option to pick some text and go ahead and translate it. So I'll go ahead and highlight some text here. And you can go ahead and let it pick all the text if you want, but we'll just go ahead and pick this little bit. And then right here we have this translate button. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we can switch over to whatever language we want. So I can switch this English over to Spanish. And then it also gives us a play icon if we want to play it out loud. You know, you want to hear the audio of the translation. All right, for the last tip in today's video, but there's more to come for sure, is we want to take advantage of being able to send full resolution videos and pictures, especially to all those iPhone users that like to complain about not getting full resolution photos and videos from us. So we do have the ability to do that. And the way to do that is really simple. So you're going to go into your gallery and you're going to find some images that you want to share. I'm just going to grab a couple random ones here, like this one here and this one here. And then you're going to go down here and tap on the share icon. And then once you do that, you're going to have quick share down here in the bottom section. All right. And once you have quick share here, you're going to have this QR code looking thingy here. And then once you tap on this, this is going to generate a QR code and it's going to also give you the ability to copy the URL. And then once you have it copied, you can just go into your text messaging. You'll pick out your recipient and then you're going to have the option to paste the URL right here. What that's going to do is send them a link to download the full resolution video or pictures and that link's going to be good for about 24 hours. 
So this is a great way for you to get full resolution 4K videos. It doesn't even matter. And it's not gonna compress it at all. They're gonna get the originals just like there were on your phone. If you have any comments or questions about today's video, please drop them down in the comments section below. I really do appreciate your time. And as always, thanks for watching.